Hey guys, Daniel Sun, welcome back to the channel. And today we have one of my favorite Ferraris, the Ferrari 360, and this one is a gated manual. Now this one is actually a 1999 model, which is actually the first year they started producing these. And you also know that we're building an F-131 engine in our channel, which uh, more content will be coming on that soon. But that engine is the exact same engine that's on this car. Now in this video, we're actually gonna be talking about what makes the 360 such an iconic car. So let's get started. Now the Ferrari 360 was actually a massive upgrade to the 355. And that was like the engine, transmission, the frame. A lot of work was done by Ferrari to stay ahead, kind of raise the bar to keep up with everything else. Ferrari decided to partner with a company that produces aluminum called Alcoa Corporation. Alcoa stands for like Aluminum Company uh, of America, I believe. They actually designed and built a new frame that was 40% uh, stiffer and 30% lighter than the 355 frame. The 355 frame was actually all tubular still, which is insanely strong, but it could not compare with the technology used on the Ferrari 360's aluminum frame. Now this was insanely helpful for 360 spiders since they didn't really have the rigidity of the roof. It, they could actually just get it from the frame and that really helped handling a lot on those models. Also, Ferrari opted for like a smoother design, more aerodynamic, uh, that also really separated the look between the 355 and the 360, so you actually knew it was a new and improved car. So now let's talk about the soul of this car, and it's actually the 3.6 liter V8 engine making 400 horsepower, and it's probably one of the best sounding V8s out there. Now we're talking about squeezing as much power as you can out of, an, out of an engine. This one is actually a great example. Now this engine belongs to the Dino family, which is an architecture designed by Enzo Ferrari's son, Dino, and it was actually expanded upon by Ferrari engineers. Now a big way that Ferrari was able to squeeze as much as 110 horsepower per liter on this engine was with the intake. Now by calculating the length of the runners into the head, Ferrari was actually able to create the supercharging effect. Uh, effectively just creating boost. So this intake is actually a variable intake. It has two sets of runners. It has the long runners that are kind of used on the low end for more torque, and it has the short runner that actually open on high load to be able to create more horsepower. Now in this car specifically, I actually rebuilt this intake. So I had to take it apart, replace all the gaskets and stuff like that. Now I will be making a video on that soon because I actually also have an intake for my engine and it needs to be rebuilt soon. So we'll go in detail and talk about the science and the engineering behind that intake on how Ferrari makes so much power with those intakes. Next, we're gonna talk about the valve train in this engine. And this is actually five valve for cylinder, so it's three intake valves and two exhaust valves. Now having three intake valves actually increases the flow into the head, effectively making the hole bigger for more air to get in. Now you couple that with some camshaft timing adjusters for the exhaust side, and you are able to create that scavenging effect that removes all that inert gas, that burnt gas, and is able to introduce freshly combustible mixture in that combustion chamber to be able to make as much horsepower as you can. So you have a good flowing head, so what's next? The answer is a light yet strong rotating assembly. Yes, the Ferrari 360 actually has a flat plane crank, has forged pistons, and titanium connecting rods. Now this combination allows the rotating assembly to turn faster, allowing it to consume more air, and yet strong enough to be able to handle the 400 horsepower this engine produces at top end. Another benefit is actually less inertia, allowing you to accelerate faster and getting that snappier throttle response. Now every manufacturer leaves a little bit of power on the table, and we are gonna find out how much is on the table on our F-131 project. Even though the 360 behind me is actually a gated manual, there was another option for these cars and it was an automatic transmission. Now, this automatic transmission is different. It is basically the same transmission as a manual, but it has a giant robot arm that shifts the gears for you. Now, yes, this is completely electronically controlled. So it has a computer, it has some solenoids that direct the fluid, the hydraulic fluid, where it needs to go and then it has a big piston on the side of the transmission that'll shift the gears in an H pattern. Now obviously the clutch is also controlled by the computer but that computer cannot do anywhere near as good of a job as a human does with a clutch because these 
wear out as fast as 30,000 miles, especially if you don't know how to drive them. Now these systems are called the F1 transmissions and they were actually pretty popular for this generation and the previous. Now, obviously the biggest problems with this uh, system was uh, hydraulic leaks, so the system wouldn't work right, clutches being worn out very quickly, and this is not like 355 where you can just pop the clutch out from the back. It takes maybe a couple of hours. This one you actually have to remove the transmission to replace the clutch. Now if you're looking for one of these, there's a few models out there that you might want to know about. Now the first one is the 360 Modena. These come in F1 manual transmission. You also had the uh, 360 Spider, same thing. They also come in manuals and they also come in F1 versions. Now they also made a special lightweight version of this car called for the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale and it had more carbon fiber. You can actually get it with carbon ceramic brake and the engine was bumped up. They did a, a couple of modifications to the engine, ported it a little bit, uh, increased compression, they changed the pistons, just a, a few minor things and they bumped up the, the horsepower a little bit. Now Brian Petty at Epicenter Garage has one of them in his collection, which uh, is pretty amazing. I've seen it already. Now, all Challenge Stradale's actually only came with the F1 system. I know of a few of them that have been converted, but that's not a very common thing to do since the car is very valuable. Now, I'm gonna exclude some of those one-off cars for the road legal cars, but outside road legal cars, you have the Ferrari 360 Challenge car. Now, yes, this car is only for the track. It is an amazing driving car. Obviously, it's not street legal. Some people, I think, have tried to make it street legal. I don't think you can, but yeah, this is an amazing car. It, it's, it's amazing on the track. But yeah, it is only for the track. Also like the Challenge Stradale, all these Challenge cars are all F1 transmissions. None of them were manual, but they have the same engine that's inside this car. Now let's talk about one of the biggest issues if you want to get into this car. Now I would say, my personal opinion, the biggest issue with this car is negligence, either by the owner or by the shop. Most of the time they do not perform the job correctly or they just divert maintenance. Now, that doesn't mean the car is perfect, but it does mean that a lot of the issues that these cars have can be avoided. Now, like I was saying earlier, clutch, it's a big one. These cars, whenever you have an F1 transmission, you can wear out the clutch very quickly and they are not cheap to replace. Now, fuel leaks from those uh, fuel pump assemblies, you know, start leaking fuel from the top, go into the exhaust, they can catch fire. That's a pretty big issue. The rollover valve, same thing. They start leaking fuel, vapor and stuff like that. Those are meant whenever the car flips over, it doesn't leak fuel out. Another big problem is the ECUs. They actually just die and you can't really find new ones. And the ones that are available right now, you gotta go ahead and reprogram. And even if you find them, they're extremely expensive. They used to cost $500. Now today, one can cost you as much as two to $3,000. You also have the heat exchanger failure, which is this tube that's like right below the intake that cools the transmission fluid with coolant. Problem is that people don't change their coolant when they're supposed to. The coolant becomes corrosive and it completely destroys that heat exchanger, causing it to leak coolant into the transmission or transmission oil into the coolant system. It becomes a whole disaster. Car overheats. It can totally be avoided by just doing your regular maintenance on that one. And last but not least, and it's leather. The leather shrinks on these cars. A lot of people leave them outside and the sun just destroys the leather. It destroys the plastic pieces up top. A lot of Ferraris actually suffer from this issue and you have to actually remove the windshield to do it properly. So it's not a cheap repair. And yeah, a lot of people just leave them out in the sun. They don't put them in the garage. They don't cover them up. They don't put sun shades on them. They think the car will be fine. And then, you know, 110 degrees later, you, you have a shrinking dash. So quick update on the F131 project, and we are looking at about $20,000 to rebuild this engine and get it going again. Now right now I have about nine, which uh, yeah, I got a long way to go. Now in the near future, I will be making a video, of kind of the breakdown where all that cost is coming from and where are we spending the money and how are we gonna get this engine to at least run, at least maybe on a bench, not even on a car, because that, 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 that price doesn't even include the car. Now, yes, I will resume the project as soon as I get closer to that $20,000 mark. And because I really don't want to leave it half done because I ran out of money and then, you know, we put all this nice stuff in there, but it's going to sit in the corner until I can get more money to finish it. I'd rather not do that. Now, yes, if you guys want to see this project finish, definitely subscribe, definitely like the video, share. So, you know, maybe the YouTube revenue can help me pay for some of this stuff, honestly. I don't, I don't even know why I got myself into it with this thing. Now I'm actually gonna close up the video right here. I'm sorry that the video is a little short, but that is because I'm busy working on some other stuff for the channel. And uh, yeah, it actually includes this Ferrari Testarossa over here. Hint, it's getting a major service, so engine out. Now I got a bunch of content planned out on that car, so hopefully that works out. But definitely stay tuned for those videos.
Now, I want you guys to go in the comment section and kind of let me know how you kind of like this style of video. No, this is not going to be the norm. There's definitely going to be some wrenching videos in here. But uh, yeah, this is something that I want to kind of explore, some variety. It makes it easier for making more content. And uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Now, again, I always appreciate you guys watching. And uh, I'll definitely see you on the next video.